In 1995, the release of a grainy black and white film, just a few minutes long, caused a worldwide sensation. It appeared to show an alien from outer space undergoing an autopsy. Was it for real? Was this evidence of one of the greatest scientific discoveries of all time? Or was it a hoax? No one's been able to offer conclusive proof one way or the other. That's until I came along. For more than 10 years now, that piece of film has divided opinion right across the world. Some say it's irrefutable proof of alien life on other planets. Some say it's the greatest hoax of all time. Well, I'll let you into a secret. It's a fake. But maybe not all of it. In this program, the men behind the 1995 alien autopsy film talk for the first time about how they came to shoot and star in the sensational footage. I'll meet the man who made the alien. He's from Manchester, not Jupiter. And the mysterious masked figure behind the glass. I'll also put to the test their earth-shattering claim that it's not a hoax at all, but a reconstruction of a real alien autopsy carried out almost 50 years before. The sleepy town of Roswell, New Mexico has become the center of the UFO universe. According to legend, in July 1947, an alien spaceship crash-landed in the desert just a few miles away, and its occupants, four aliens, that's right, creatures from outer space, were captured by the US military and taken to this top-secret hangar. Conspiracy theorists and ufologists believe it triggered a giant cover-up by the US government. And the Roswell story has become the most prominent tale in worldwide UFO folklore. 1995, the Roswell crash story surfaced again, amazingly this time, in London. On May the 5th of that year, in a small, private cinema like this one, the now notorious alien autopsy footage was screened for the first time. On that spring day, the Museum of London, in the heart of the city, became the centre of the universe, or at least the known universe. The world waited in anticipation as a hundred invited guests gathered at the invitation of businessman Ray Santilli and his friend and confidant, Gary Shufield. Though experienced TV executives, they were largely unknown to their audience, which had been hand-picked to maximise conflict and controversy. There were journalists, ufologists, church leaders from all religions, believers and non-believers. And they were about to witness something quite remarkable. In 1995, I received an invitation to attend a film screening, which I was told was going to be quite extraordinary. That phone call was when I first heard the name Ray Santilli. Oh, on that morning, these three gentlemen came into the lecture theatre and one of them gave me a tape. And we put, I put it into the machine and I started to run the tape down. And when we came to the start of the programme, he said, stop, stop, stop. OK, I stopped. He said, give me the tape. I said, well, he can stay in the machine, that's OK. No, he said, give me the tape. When we're ready to run it, I'll give it back to you, and we're right on the start mark. OK. The curtains parted, and I think a caption came up on the screen to say something like, uh, you are about to see a piece of film which we believe was taken uh, in or near Roswell, New Mexico, in 1947. Within the first 20, 30 seconds, I thought, what am I looking at here? This looks like a home movie. Grainy, slightly shaky, uh, black and white uh, film showing uh, a body of some sort, obviously not human, uh, lying um, on its back on a, a table or a raised platform of some sort. 
There was stunned silence in the auditorium when the film was shown, and you could literally hear a pin drop. And uh, people were sat open mouthed, others were taking sketches because there were no cameras allowed. They were. <laughs> they were re he really had them, you know. And I really thought, you idiots, I mean, this is rubbish. What's going on here? You know, <laughs> he's playing with them. And this is the film that was screened that day at the Museum of London. It appears to feature two US Army pathologists performing an autopsy on an alien from outer space. Behind a glass screen, a masked scientist is taking notes. After the screening, it was really a mixed reaction. But most of them, like myself, when I'd first seen it, wanted to know more. Well, he said, what do you think? And I said, well, to be honest, it could have been you in that gown and you could have shot that two weeks ago. He didn't answer that. Suddenly, the, the two people who, I think, had been the ones to search us on our way in, almost physically picked Ray Santilli up and took him out of the room. Uh, clearly, someone there didn't want him talking to the ufologists. Within weeks of the Museum of London screening, the footage was shown on TV programmes all over the world. The authenticity of the film was investigated, the authenticity of Ray and Gary was investigated, but no one was able to prove conclusively that the alien autopsy was faked. Tonight on Town Meeting, the alien autopsy, reality or hoax? I've seen the film. Hey, wait a second. Are you being serious? It. it shows an alien being worked on. The belief that we are not alone is gathering interest. A film suggests that aliens crash landed near Roswell, New Mexico in 1947, and they were even autopsied by the US Air Force. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> So where on earth did this amazing autopsy footage come from? Santilli and Shufield were in Cleveland, Ohio in 1992 looking for rare home movie footage of Elvis when Ray Santilli claims he was approached by an ex-US Army cameraman. The cameraman offered to sell him a film he claimed he had shot at Roswell in 1947 following the supposed crash of a spacecraft. Intrigued, Ray put on a pair of shorts a large shirt and headed for Florida. The film Ray claims he was shown there in the cameraman's home in Clearwater on the Gulf Coast featured the autopsy of more than one alien and an apparent examination of UFO crash wreckage. Fourteen years later, using interrogation techniques, I learned, watching too many detective movies, I've gone in search of the truth. Who sold you the film? The cameraman. What's his name? I'm not telling you. Why not? Because it, at the time, um, it was a promise uh, at the beginning that I wouldn't, I wouldn't disclose his name. I never have done. So where do you fit into the whole operation? I was actually with Ray in Cleveland. Um, he disappeared off for a couple of days, didn't know where he'd gone, what he was doing. And um, it turned out that he went down to, um, to Florida uh, to see the cameraman. I knew nothing of this at the time. And after the event, he told me where he'd been and what he'd seen. There were 22 uh, reels of film, uh, which probably ran for about uh, four or five minutes each. They were very small reels. I just remember how clear in his mind he was that this guy was real. You know, if you walk into someone's house and you see the way they live and you see the pictures on the wall and you, you meet their wife, you, you know, you have an absolute understanding from the moment you walk in through that door whether they're genuine or not. But you didn't leave with the film that night. No. He Why was, not? He was a tough cookie. So how long did it take you to negotiate a deal with them? About two years, eventually. You know, it, uh, um, we didn't have the cash at the time. And... Uh, uh, and it was, uh, it was a subject which, you know, you can't really go to the bank and, you know, and, and, and take a loan out for it. You know, it was just one of those things where um, when, when the time was right and we had the cash, we could then take the punt. How much cash did you pay him? Can you disclose that? It, would be, it wouldn't be proper for me to, to take. And was this a small amount of money, a medium amount of money, a large amount of money, a massive amount of money? Um, in your terms, not a lot of money. 
Ray and Gary have until now always claimed that the film shown at the Museum of London in 95 is the same original footage he bought from the cameraman in Florida. This, at any rate, is what he told the TV companies who he gave the film to for free. We gave that film to broadcasters purely on the condition that they investigate it. We didn't care whether they said the film was genuine or not, but I banked on broadcasters um, doing the professional job they do in stirring up the public and, and, and investigating this. I, I, I did bank that on, on the fact that they would be able to, to kick this into gear, and they did. But the other thing they were banking on, understandably, was that their chance discovery of proof of life on other planets would turn out to be a bit of a money spinner as well. I first heard of uh, Ray Santilli around about um, April 1995 uh, when he approached one of my reporters uh, with a story that he had exclusive footage. In this particular case, it was something which we couldn't not look at because uh, were it true, it would probably have been bigger than Jesus. They'd clearly been to other newspapers uh, who had offered, I think, somewhere around probably 30, 40,000 uh, pounds the news of the world always likes to pride itself on its ability to pay more, so we topped that offer and offered 50 to see the tape. There was a sort of a, a smoke and mirrors type of uh, conversation between us and uh, Ray Santilli where he was coming up with all sorts of reasons why it couldn't be produced immediately. He assumed that it would be a matter of tape in one hand, brown envelope full of cash in the other, and it was at that point that we told him it would be after publication, and publication would only occur once we had had the, the tape verified by a number of experts and at this point he began to get very, very nervous. And immediately after that conversation, all contact between ourselves and Race and Tilly evaporated. He disappeared off the radar screen. So what do we have so far? An apparent autopsy on an alien from outer space, shot in 1947 in 16mm film and then almost 50 years later, bought from an unnamed cameraman in Florida. But while that's the story they've stuck to all these years, it turns out it's not the whole story. Because for the first time in public, Ray Santilli and Gary Shufield are about to reveal the true tale of the alien autopsy. Who starred in your film? Are you there? Yes, I'm there. We had to, to build a, a very precise set. And I'll reveal to you some of the other characters involved in their story, all of them from this planet. Did you poke or prod or yeah, touch absolutely. the alien? Yeah, yeah. take it home with me. Well, we got some uh, sheep's brains and uh, set them in jelly, uh, raspberry jelly, I seem to recall. There wasn't any difficulty in, in asking people not to talk. 